Well, it looks like we might know exactly where Tesla is going to be placing its next factory, and it might not be where you expect. Plus, in breaking news, Tesla just released information about their virtual power grid going broad scale in the United States. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I'm about to go on vacation, so you're going to see me in a different locale. I will i won't even tell you where it's going to be, but you'll, you'll know from the background as soon as you see videos from there. So anyway, expect a little less editing, a little more cool background than this stuff back here. And second of all, I had a whole other video planned that I'll probably just wait and do next week. It's more of a, a thinking kind of thing and less breaking news. But anyway, I think it's important, but I wanted to put that aside because I think there's two important pieces of news today. Day. The first one is that we might know where the next Tesla factory is going to be, and it's in Mexico. So this news is being broken by Torque News, and I will put a link to this in the description. I'm not going to go through it. It's a four minute video, and it says that this new factory is going to be in Millennio, Mexico. So let's take a quick look at where that is. This is actually from one of my Patreon patrons. Did the screen grab, so I appreciate it. It's in kilometers. This is a, a 640 kilometers between Millennio and Austin, Texas, which is about 400 miles, which conveniently happens to be within the range of the Tesla semi truck at about 500 miles of range. So this is the kind of thing that they could easily do on a single charge if they do end up building a factory here. Of course, this is all rumors at this point, so, you know, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt, I suppose. But anyway, I think that this is really interesting news. Now, immediately in my Discord discussions with my Patreon patrons, and if you're interested in joining that, by all means, check out the link in the description and come join us. But anyway, in the discussion, people were saying, why in the world would they put this in Mexico when you've got the new Inflation Reduction Act $7,500 tax credit that's coming about soon. And I said, but wait, the cars do not have to be manufactured in the USA, but in North America, which is Canada, the USA, and Mexico. And just to check my facts, I found this MSN article from November 16th. Again, the Inflation Reduction Act is monstrous, so I'm not going to go through it in every bit of detail. But anyway, the important part here you will see is that highlights of these requirements. Final assembly of the electric vehicles must occur in North America. So that means parts can be made all around the world, but the car has to be put together in North America, but that does include Mexico and Canada as well as the United States. And that was kind of a no-brainer that was going to have to happen because of the lobbying efforts of the likes of Ford and GM, etc. For example, the Mach-E is already made in Mexico and Ford is not going to want to give up on these credits for U.S. buyers who want to purchase the Mach-E. So even before this law was passed, it was a very, very high likelihood that being made in Mexico was going to be fine. So anyway, that is a huge impetus for Tesla to think about make manufacturing something in Mexico. Of course, the main advantage of moving to Mexico to manufacture things is that the manufacturing costs are cheaper because generally labor and other things like taxes and stuff are cheaper. So it's less expensive for them to make the vehicles there just like it is in Shanghai and China as opposed to in Berlin or Austin or Fremont. So there are economies that can be garnered by having the car built in an area where labor costs are not as high. But they needed to have it built in a North American city in order to be eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. So that was also a very important aspect of where they were thinking about. So the more you kind of think about this, and again, this is all still rumors, obviously, but the more you think about it, the more it would make perfect sense to put it in a town in northern Mexico, just below Texas, so that the distance between Austin and that city was less than the 500 mile range of a Tesla semi truck. And, you know, eventually they could probably look at rail cars and things like that as well, too. But anyway, it just looks like that is the perfect kind of place to put a factory. And while we're on the topic of this, while we have a $7,500 tax credit, which is coming about on January 1st of 2023, so just a couple of weeks away, it's split in half. So the critical battery materials, which means that a specified percentage of the battery minerals have to be mined or recycled in the United States or a country with a free trade agreement with the U.S. And by the way, that would be North American Free Trade Agreement. So you've got things like that already in place with these other countries. That is going to be a fairly difficult thing to do because China controls so many of the critical minerals. Anyway, then the second aspect of it, the second half of the tax credit is from battery components, which means that a specified percentage of components must be manufactured and assembled in the U.S. And then, of course, the final assembly has to be done in the United States. Mexico or Canada. And then importantly enough down at the bottom here, blacklisted countries cannot be involved in 
and supplying batteries, components, or minerals. And that, of course, includes Russia, Iran, North Korea, and very importantly, China. So part of the Inflation Reduction Act, this entire thing that has to do with vehicle tax credits and stuff, is clearly to wean the United States off of dependence on China for all of these raw materials. This is going to be a very, very tall order. It's going to be a tough ask, and it's unclear exactly how quickly companies are going to be required to do this. Originally, it was sort of like immediately, but then they've kind of extended this. So we'll see how all of this goes. Nobody knows exactly yet how all of these credits are going to work and how much you're going to be able to get immediately versus in a year or two, etc. But anyway, the goal of this is to wean the United States and its new EVs off of dependence on China. And I personally think that's all to the good. Of course, that does not help relations with China at all, but they're already pretty much in the crapper anyway. So <laughs> it's not like things are going to get too much worse between the United States and China. But anyway, I think that this Inflation Reduction Act is actually a good idea for the most part. Again, it's a law. It's not perfect or anything. But this is great. And this lends a lot of credence to the fact that Tesla would really strongly consider putting a factory in Mexico. There are also rumors that there's another factory that's being built currently in Canada in the Montreal area. I don't know too much about that, but that also is something worth following. So anyway, all of this would be really interesting because Canada has a lot of raw materials that will be used in batteries. And so making deals to mine through them and also through parts of the Western United States, and I don't know as much about the mineral content of things in Mexico, but I do know that they have access to a lot of lithium, those beds where they actually dry the stuff out and collect lithium. So there are a lot of minerals that are available in the North American continent. And so this is going to be really interesting to watch what happens over the next couple of years. So anyway, I know a lot of people really hate the Inflation Reduction Act, and I think the tax credits are not particularly necessary but I really do appreciate the fact that they're attempting to get manufacturing to come back into North America. I think that's a really good aspect of this bill, personally. So that's where Tesla might be putting their next factory. We don't know exactly what they might be manufacturing there. Maybe it's going to be the new Model 3 vehicle, the new Highland, codenamed Highland vehicle that's coming out, or maybe it will be the new Tesla, you know, Model 2, $25,000, $30,000 car, the less expensive vehicle. That would make very good sense to build in Mexico. Mexico, because again, you're super price conscious when you're dealing with a low cost vehicle like that. But that takes us to this breaking news. There was a tweet from Tesla, like literally as I was sitting down to do this episode. And this is actually really, really exciting. I'm going to read this through with you so you'll get my reactions to things live as we go. So anyway, Tesla electric clean energy for your home and community. By the way, not great graphics, guys. <laughs> you don't really want to have your white text be disappeared by the sun. I think that's not such a great idea. But anyway, so they have sustainable energy, reliable electricity, cleaner grid. This is all good. And supposedly this is going to be available in many places just from a really quick glance at this. And sort of like Tesla's insurance, this might be one of those things where you can save money and also do good for the community as well. So reading through the announcement, again, I'll put a link to this in the description if you're interested. Powering a cleaner grid, solar and power wall can help you and your community accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. So you and your community. With Tesla Electric, your power wall automatically decides when to charge and when to sell electricity to the grid. Together with other Tesla Electric members, you can maximize the value of your solar energy while using your Powerwall storage to add more renewable electricity to the grid. You can also achieve your own sustainability goals when importing electricity from the grid as Tesla Electric offsets your usage with energy from 100% renewable sources. So that's really interesting. So one thing to note here, Tesla Electric, this looks like something like, you know, Georgia Power or Pacific Gas and Electric or something. This looks like a utility company. Now, this is a virtual power plant. In other words, it is, it's distributed between all of these batteries, but they are, you know, making a direct sort of attack against traditional power companies quite clearly by doing this move. One thing that's unclear here and actually matters to me a lot is whether it's required that you purchase a solar roof or solar panels in order to get a power wall still. I was going to actually order a power wall. I, our situation is such that we're probably going to move from this house in about four and a half to five years. And it just made no economic sense to put up solar panels. But having a power wall, on the other hand, would be a fantastic option for us. So I'm hoping that they're going to sort of break these things apart again as they have more battery manufacturing capability. They used to be able to do this. You used to be able to order power walls separate from the solar panels, but they, they mitigated that because they didn't have enough batteries. But hopefully they've 
kind of gotten through that bottleneck and they will offer the batteries by themselves because I would certainly purchase the power walls because of course those are transportable. <laughs> I mean, it's going to require, it's heavy and everything, but you could take those things elsewhere with you, whereas the solar panels are pretty much stuck with the house that you purchased them for. So anyway, we'll have to see if Tesla will release the power walls on their own to customers like me who where the solar panels and stuff like that don't make as much sense as for potentially other people. All right, continuing on, you've got off peak time, right? That's a good time for you to take power off of the grid or something like that or potentially charge it up if you want. And so you actually utilize that power as the it is cheaper and as there is more capacity available because of course, you know, power plants generate power over broad amounts of time. And then during peak demand, which is usually the afternoon and the evening, especially in summertime, that's when you can push the power back onto the grid again. And what you can do is energy arbitrage, which means you buy at a low price, right? You charge up the batteries when the price is low. Then you sell the electricity back when the cost is high. And so you can actually mitigate your electric charge. So this doesn't necessitate having a solar panel on your roof or anything or having a solar roof. In that case, you could actually generate, you know, pretty much almost completely free and then sell off excess that you have. But even if you just have the power wall, you can help to load balance because you can take energy up when there is more energy generation from the power grid than there is usage, which is generally at night and then you can sell it back during the daytime. So you can help to load balance the, the main grid, You know, not just the virtual power plant, not just your local area, but the main power grid that you're using. You can help to load balance that and at the same time, make money off of trading by purchasing at a low price and selling at a high price and reduce the cost of your electric bill. That's the basic shtick that we're talking about here for Tesla Electric. And finally, we get to the bummer because this is only in Texas as far as I know at this point. Now, hopefully just like with Tesla, insurance. This will roll out to more places in the U.S. and then eventually the rest of the world. But anyway, let's go ahead and read. If you're a Powerwall owner with retail choice in Texas, which I guess means you can choose which power company you want, you can save on your electricity bills. You earn credits towards your bill when you contribute energy stored in your Powerwall to buffer the grid. As a member, you can also monitor the sources of your electricity supply 24-7 in the Tesla app and ensure that any electricity you use from the grid is offset with 100% Texas-generated renewable energy. Energy. Interesting little twist to this whole thing. On average, Tesla Electric members have the potential to earn over 50% more in credits on their electricity bills compared to similar plans. So Texas is a weird, weird place in most of the rest of the country, and it might actually stall out rollout of this to places like Georgia. There's kind of a monopoly. Like when I moved into my house, I had to go with Walton EMC. That was my only choice because they sort of own this area, right? These companies have these monopolies or fiefdoms in particular areas in a given state or in a given part of the country or something like that. So there is no choice. So it will be more difficult for Tesla to break into these areas, but Tesla's kind of a free for all. And it's one of the reasons why people had like $3,000 electric bills back during that horrible storm in the spring of 2021, I think it was, or 2020. Gosh, <laughs> I don't remember. It's been so long. I can't remember what year it was. But anyway, when everything got really, really bad and everything froze, they just went crazy and charged these massive electric rates, which they're not a allowed to do here because it's all very, very tightly controlled. But anyway, Texas is a good place for Tesla to start in that case because retail choice means that customers can actually choose from different electricity providers, which means that then they can actually utilize these power walls and use Tesla's virtual power plant in order to make electricity themselves and to sell it back and to get a bunch of credits and to save a bunch of money. So then we've got, you know, an example of this from the phone app. You can see now they're selling at 32 cents a kilowatt hour and they purchased it much, much lower than that, maybe a few cents a kilowatt hour. So anyway, it's they've got they're making a lot of money on this by selling high and buying low. And then of course the real genius of this is the software that's behind this. Sell high, earn more. Tesla tracks energy prices in real time and sells your excess electricity to the grid when prices are high, earning you credits on your bill. So basically they're they're kind of a back end to this whole thing. And without you having to think about it, they're purchasing energy for you at low rates and then selling it back at 
high rates, which means that you get credits so your energy bill goes down. And then interestingly enough, fully integrated, manage your entire Tesla ecosystem in the Tesla app, review your usage, monitor your buying and selling rates and more. So the Tesla app is getting to be quite the app and I have a feeling that we're going to see more and more things kind of rolled into this app. So keep an eye out on the Tesla app itself. And then the last part of this is it's 100% sustainable. Tesla powers your home with 100% Texas generated clean energy that you can monitor remotely 24 seven. So again, only available in Texas right now, but this will be a really interesting pilot program. And I could see customers, you know, saving maybe 50% off of their current electric bills, regardless of whether they have solar panels or not. Now, if you have solar panels, you could very easily end up, you know, generating a little bit of net positive cash flow on your end as you do something like this, because of course you could sell back excess energy during the day from your solar panels and from the batteries and then charge up at night. So this could be a really, really, you know, kind of win-win situation for Texas consumers. And hopefully over time, there will be some relaxation of the laws in the rest of the country so that Tesla will be able to roll this out to other states like Georgia, where I am. I would dearly love to purchase Powerwalls in order to be able to do this sort of energy arbitrage. And honestly, even without that, I would still like to be able to purchase it because the high rate times are four times more expensive than the low rate times. And if I never had to actually you know, use electricity during the high rate times because I could pull it off of the batteries, that would end up saving a lot of money and probably end up paying off the power wall in probably five or six years. So that would be really, really cool. All right, so big news on the Tesla factory front and the Tesla electric front. Tesla looks like they're going to be building their fifth factory, their fifth major factory potentially in Mexico, and they're trying to become a competitor in the electric power company space. Let me know what you think about this. Of course, the Mexico factory thing is still a rumor, but Tesla just announced the thing about the virtual power plant, so that's definitely happening. If you happen to live in Texas, definitely let me know if you're planning on purchasing this when it's available. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. The discussion about the Mexico factory actually came out of a discussion on Discord with my Patreon patrons today, as I said. So I really appreciate that. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells, all of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.